Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online community dedicated to teaching others with classes that will strengthen their skills. It offers membership with meaning. The support of many artists in a community of millions guarantees the exponential growth of your skills. They offer many classes for stuff like fine art, graphic design, animation, and illustration. The classes are useful as they allow you to dip your toes into some topics that you're not really comfortable with doing. For example, I'm not really one for traditional art, so I'm not really comfortable with doing it. That was until I found a class named Ink Drawing Techniques, Brush, Nibs, and Pen Style by Yuku Shimizu. She even teaches you the techniques behind drawing different textures such as metal, feathers, and hair. Skillshare is specifically only for learning, so there are absolutely no advertisements to be found. They're always launching new premium classes, so if you're stuck in art block or willing to try something new, try watching one to expand your skills. Skillshare is less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Hey, it's me, your favorite artist that you're obviously subscribed to, and welcome back to another art tutorial. This is going to be over layer effects, these things that you see right here. And um, the, these differ from many program to another, so I'm just going to go over the basic four that you should probably know. And here are the basic four. Multiply, add glow, which can also go by luminosity or just add by itself. Color dodge, which can also go by lumion shade on, uh, on um, Psy and overlay. Now these four are really important to making your art more vibrant and they give you an easier way of making color schemes that you don't really need to. So here, let me give you an example, all right? So let's say this is, okay. So let's say this is the color scheme that you want your character to have. This is your shading color scheme. And I'm sorry if I'm doing this weird, I am I am having a non-screen tablet right now and I am not used to this. So um, these this let's say this is your color scheme, okay? If you wanted your character to look like they were in the dark, then you would have to create a whole new color scheme which may not even look right. So let's say, oh yeah, that's my character's color scheme when they're in the dark. Yeah, that's a little bit too complicating. What you can do is overlay the character with a multiply layer and take a, like a, a night sky color and then just go over it. And then bam, that is your night sky color scheme. So that's what layer effects do. They change the way your color looks so it fits with your environment. Or maybe sometimes they're just for cool effects. So I'm gonna explain each and each each of four of these. I'm gonna explain all four of these and tell you why they're really important to your art. So first off, we have multiply. Like I just told you, it's better, like it's easier to fit your character into an environment when you have that. So let's say our ball right here, okay? Let's say this was a night sky. All right, let's say you have your night sky, for example, okay? And then you want your ball to look like it's in the, like it's in the background. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a multiply layer, we're gonna take one of these colors and we're gonna fill tool it. So bam, now your uh, your circle fits with, in, with its environment. That's what the multiply uh, layer effect is really useful for. It's also useful for creating more depth into your shadows. So I'm gonna explain what I mean right here because we all know I'm not the best at explaining stuff. Let's say we have a leg right here best leg ever okay and now we want to shade the leg so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our shading brush we're gonna clip it we're gonna ooh let's make a leg ooh we got the kneecap we got the we got the outside shadow we got the thing we're gonna blend it we're gonna blend it we're gonna take more shadow and then we're gonna put the finishing touches on her knee because knees are very important when it comes to art and then there's our leg okay but it kind of looks boring doesn't it because it's just all the same color so what we can do is we're gonna take a multiply layer actually hold on let me get my deeper shadows in there all right whatever it's just one shadow i don't really care what we're gonna do is take a multiply layer, clip it, multiply, take the second shade of the skin color, and what we're gonna do 
is we're going to make a general shading tip or like a general shading of the leg. So we all know that the knee is like that. And then we're going to fill all the bottom layer with that. And then not all the legs should be shaded. So what we're going to do is just make a gradient off of the bottom. So like that. And then I'm going to put a little hard shadow so we all know that it is a hard material. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to lighten it just so it looks a little less harsh. And then there. So like I, I recently developed this technique. Uh, I know it's probably not an original technique, but I kind of just figured that out on my own. So what I usually do is, so I know it's a bad example, but let's pretend that that I actually did draw any and I'm going to erase it. So it's more of a knee shape because <laughs> right now this is not a knee shape or a leg shape. So like the, the multiply layer gives it more depth of the leg here. I'm going to, I'm getting a little picky with my sketch now. Okay. Well, it's not showing up anymore. So we took, a pretty basic shape and then added more depth into it with our multiply layer. Now, picking colors for multiply layers that look right is kind of challenging, but what I usually tend to do is just go for, like up for the second color of your shading. That's usually the color I pick. So that we got a knee and I'm gonna outline it so I can make a little cool highlight that I usually, okay, I guess not. Bam, little highlights that everyone likes. So there's your leg. Multiply layer is really useful for giving environment to your character and adding more depth into body parts. So a general tip is that you want to use the multiply, the multiply layer for general shadows. And then for your base, uh, you kind of want to go more into detail. And then you want to do general shadows. And then it gives it more depth, you know? It gives it more of a perspective. Like we all know the knee is below the leg. Er, and yeah, see? So it's really easy to use that. Um, next thing on our list. Get the fuck out of here. All right. Now on to add and glow. Add and glow is really useful for adding, or adding highlights and reflections. So I'm going to show you an example here. You see these eyes? Pretty eyes, aren't they? So... An example of them being like add and glow being used as reflections are with these little triangles things right here. Um, these seem, they may seem like a minor detail, but when you zoom out, they really give like a glass like uh, texture to them. Like light is reflecting on to the top of it and is kind of being reflected off. So it kind of gives it like a glass like reflection. I don't know how to explain it really, but you know, that that's what add and glow does it, it gives reflections see these little things right here these are well that one's not but these two right here are with add and glow as well and when we zoom out they give it the sense of like reflecting light which is redundant to say with this drawing okay for some reason it's very low res add and glow is used for the hair highlights which i don't really do anymore but you know some people do like the style of having hair highlights that are a glow layer so what I did was I took this brush. Okay, well, I don't have it on my PC. So I'm going to use another example. So these little thigh highlights right here, these were used, um, these were made using an add and glow layer. So like I took the skin color, I kind of outlined it with um, the edges of the thighs, and then I kind of um, lowered the opacity and I made like a little reflection because light is being reflected off of her thighs. Same for her arms. Same for her cheeks, her cheek right here. And yeah, so it's really useful for adding highlights. So as you can see here, I'm gonna show you on another example and I'm actually gonna show you. All right, let's just say, let's just say that's a job well done. So yeah, I'm not here to teach you how to use them. I'm here to teach you what they do and what good practices for them. So, okay, to recap, multiply layer, good for adding depth into shading. Add and glow layer, good for adding reflections and highlights. Finally, color dodge. Now, color dodge is a really fun one. If you know who Rosh draws is, I'm pretty sure he's the guy who loves to do color dodging. And I don't blame him because it is really fun. So what is color dodging? Well, color dodging is an easy way to add saturation and vibrancy to your drawings. So I'm um, you see or er, you see these eyes right here? 
Yep, the, you may not know it, but the reason they look so vibrant is because I added um, a glow dodge layer to them. So as you can see, they may seem dull to you. So we're gonna fix that. Let's pretend they seem dull to you. We're gonna fix that. We're gonna take a saturated color, uh, like a saturated neon color. We're gonna take an airbrush tool if I can find it. And then we're gonna add a little bit of vibrancy. Okay, now this may be too vibrant for you, but I don't blame you because I already did this before. And you can see what they do is that they add more vibrancy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the ball more vibrant. What we're gonna do is clip it, glow dodge, get a saturated color or just a bright color, something, something bright, something that means something. And then overlay it with that. And then we're gonna tone it down a little. So see, it adds more vibrancy to your sphere and it adds more vibrancy to the drawing as a whole. So usually what people do with this is they usually add it on top of the hair. I can't show you in this girl because she has gray hair. I, I, I can try at least. We're gonna add glow dodge. I mean, I guess you can, but I mean, it's not very good for her hair because she has gray hair. But you can you can see what you mean, like you can see what I mean. People use this to add vibrancy. Now I recommend not overdoing this. There is a thing as too much vibrancy. So what I recommend is usually only doing it for the eyes and the hair, like because when you look at someone, you're gonna notice their face. So I recommend only doing it for the the eyes and hair. As you progress better as an artist, you figure out what else to do. Also, what I use it for is subscattering. So if you can see these eyes, these orange parts right here is also um, glow dodge. What I did was I took a very saturated orange. I drew it right or like I just took an airbrush tool and I just did that. And what it does is that it adds a sense of subscatter shattering. Subsca subscatter. Okay. Subscatter. And then it makes it look more vibrant. So yeah. So glow dodge is really, really useful for um, subscattering. Uh, it's really useful for adding vibrancy to your art. It's really useful for making things bright. It's nice. So now on to overlay. Now I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I'm not a huge expert on overlay. So if you could com like if someone could comment like a really good way to explain what overlay does, I would appreciate it. What I could just really tell you is that I usually you know, mix it up. I usually, I usually mix it up with a uh, color dodge in the form that like, I kind of want it to be mild, the vibrant and not super vibrant. So what glow dodge does is that it makes it super vibrant while overlay just makes it mildly brighter and vibrant. So like it's a mix of bright and vibrant and it really depends on what color you use. But like, that's usually what I use it for. I can't really tell you. So recap, multiply layer good for sh uh, extra depth and shading and it's good for environments now colors you should pick with overlay get kind of confusing i usually recommend more towards like the middle spectrum or like the low like around here spectrum uh if you're doing a sky i recommend taking the background of the sky and then just using that but if you're using it for shading purposes i recommend using the second shading color in your color scheme Add and glow, add and glow. Add and glow is really good for reflections and highlights. Um, as you can see here, reflections, you can see in her inner thigh, there are reflections. Colors I recommend for this is usually the top color, but you can also go like an extra step further. Use a brighter color or use a more saturated color. Color dodge, you kind of want to go for like a more saturated color in this one, like more towards this spectrum, like right here. This is really good for giving your color, your your picture vibrance. Oh, I just had a voice crack. Overlay, uh, I usually use the top color because uh, like, oh, remember overlay, I kind of use it as like a light color dodge. So I typically go for like a top color. And yeah, I hope today that you learned the four basic layer effects that you should know. These are very important on being able to create new color schemes without having to alter your pre-existing ones. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.